On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to learn how to target nearby Wi-Fi devices and also gather Wi-Fi reconnaissance through a tool called Aircrack NG. Wi-Fi devices like your smartphone are constantly emitting data, even if they might not be connected to a Wi-Fi network. This can still reveal information, such as networks that your device is connected to before, as well as other critical information, such as your device's unique hardware address. Using a monitor mode enabled Wi-Fi dongle like this one, or even a slightly smaller and conspicuous package, can be used to listen in on this Wi-Fi information, as well as just Wi-Fi conversations that are happening around us between things like access points and client devices. Today, we're gonna focus on a tool called Aerodump NG to learn how an attacker could potentially hone in on one of these conversations to determine if something like your home network or devices are compromisable. We're going to learn how to use promiscuous mode or monitor mode to basically get a holistic data capture and see what Wi-Fi traffic is happening all around us. To follow along, all you're going to need is a monitor mode enabled Wi-Fi dongle as well as a Linux computer. To get started, we're going to install a suite of Wi-Fi hacking tools called Aircrack NG. So this is gonna let us run a promiscuous Wi-Fi scan, as well as add various parameters that's gonna basically let us look for things like unsecure Wi-Fi networks, and is also gonna let us output this to a capture file that we can later on use for network traffic analysis in a program like Wireshark. So in order to get started, we can install this tool on a Linux computer just by running sudo apt install aircrack-ng. And this will give us full access to the Aircrack NG toolkit, which you can read more about on this page here. Today, we're gonna focus on a specific tool called Aerodump NG to see how you can holistically capture Wi Fi packets nearby and output them into a readable file, such as a CSV file that we can parse in Python, or something like a PCAP file, which we can analyze um, in something like Wireshark. So in conjunction with Aerodump NG, we're also gonna take a look briefly at how to use Airmon NG, which is essential for being able to interface with your Wi-Fi device, which for me is my Panda PAU09, and be able to put this into monitor mode so we can start capturing information via Aerodump. So to get started, I'm gonna open up my terminal and we're gonna go ahead and run sudo airmon tac ng to get a list of current devices that are connected to our computer. So I can hit enter, and as you can see, I only have one device that's currently accessible, which is gonna be my internal Wi-Fi card. Now, if I plug in my Wi-Fi dongle and run the same command, you can see we now have access to two different devices, one of them, which is now the Wi-Fi dongle that I plugged in. So to get this started with monitor mode, I can go ahead and just copy this Wi-Fi interface and run the following command through airmon, which is sudo airmon tag ng start, followed by the name of the interface. So given that your chipset is able to use monitor mode, it should enable this on your device. And if I just run sudo airmon ng one more time, you can see that the interface has been renamed to denote that it's a monitor mode enabled device. So now that we have this set up at the interface WLAN0MON, I can go ahead and start up the Aerodump NG tool, which we can start using to filter out for Wi-Fi packets. So to begin, I can type sudo Aerodump NG, followed by the name of our Wi-Fi interface, which is gonna be WLAN0MON. So as you can see here, it starts a pretty holistic Wi-Fi capture that gives us insight to access points or networks that are nearby, as well as a list of client devices or basically devices that are connected to the above networks. So Aerodump NG also performs a thing called channel hopping by default, which allows us to hop through all of the Wi-Fi channels that are nearby without specifically focusing in on any channel in particular. So this might actually drop some information if we're looking to do a more targeted scan, but gives us a basic idea of what Wi-Fi devices or networks are nearby. Now, if I wanted to filter out for just these access points or just these devices that are here, or just these client devices that are listed down here, we're able to do this as well as also add some other parameters that allow us to hone in on specific Wi-Fi networks and also look for specific devices which might be vulnerable and connected to any one of these networks. So in order to do this through Aerodump NG, I'm gonna first open up a new window here and we're gonna run the man page on Aerodump to get an idea of what parameters and options we have available. So scrolling down, you can see we have the following commands that can be added onto Aerodump as well as a couple key commands that you can use in order to sort directly through Aerodump. So for example, one of the first ones here allows us to select for only Wi-Fi stations or only access points, or maybe even devices that are sending out acknowledgement frames or the current combined window that we have pulled up here. 
So just by using the A key on our keyboard, we're able to run a basic filter that lets us see just Wi-Fi devices or Wi-Fi networks. So I'm gonna do this by tabbing through with the letter A on my keyboard. And as you can see, it's currently displaying devices that have access points, um, devices that are currently connected to these access points, as well as any devices emitting acknowledgement frames. But I wanna tab over, not through access points, but over to Wi-Fi stations to get an idea of basically Wi-Fi clients that are nearby in the area. So this is gonna let me see things like laptops, cell phones, or basically any other personal device that's not emitting an access point at the moment. So as you can see down here, we have a couple devices that are currently authenticated to networks, which we can determine by this BSSID here, and also some other devices which are currently not associated with any network. Additionally, if we take a look at this column here, this gives us a little more information about these devices that are sending out things called probe requests. So probe requests are emitted by devices when they're trying to connect to a network they've seen before, since they're currently not connected to anything. So we can see a list of some network names that these devices are emitting. And if we wanted to do something malicious, like spawn up our own Wi-Fi access point with the same name, these devices would basically try to authenticate to this access point and we would have the ability to spawn something like a man in the middle attack and gain access to any information that this device thinks it's sending over to a legitimate network. So being able to identify this information through something like Aerodump NG allows us to target specific Wi-Fi devices through a pretty simple interface and even integrate with other tools like Airplay NG if we want to run such attacks like the one that I mentioned. Now, looking at some of these specific Wi-Fi devices that we can see here, we can even determine what kind of devices these are by taking a look at the manufacturer type. Now, each MAC address should have a unique value, but one thing that's not usually unique about them is going to be the OUI prefix, which is gonna be the first three octets of any MAC address, which lets us determine the manufacturer of a device. So for instance, here we have this device that starts with BCDDC2, which is currently a Wi-Fi client to this MAC address here. Now, if I go ahead and copy these first three octets of this MAC address, I can go ahead and use something like an OUI lookup tool to determine the manufacturer of this device. So I'm interested in seeing this device since it's currently connected to a network. And if I want to determine what this device is, I can use a lookup tool like this in order to determine that. So as you can see here, this device is manufactured by Espressive Inc, which creates IoT devices like an ESP8266 or the ESP32. So this would quickly let us identify what type of Wi-Fi devices are nearby. For instance, specific cell phones like Apple devices, Samsung, or even what specific laptop vendor a person might be using. So switching back over to Aerodump NG, you can see we also get some information about these devices, both the client devices and access points, such as things like how close in proximity they are to us, the channel that they're operating on, what encryption type they're using, as well as some other super useful information. Now, if I want to sort for this information live in Aerodump NG, I can also do this by using a few of the other modifiers that we took a look at. So one of my favorites is this M command here, which basically lets us denote a color for specific Wi-Fi devices and being able to associate each one in a visually distinctive way. So for example, if I want to target a specific Wi-Fi network, first I can go ahead and hit tab. And this is gonna let me use the arrow keys on my keyboard to select a specific network and identify what devices are currently connected. So for example, you can see this network up here as well as the devices that are currently connected to it in the following data capture that's below. And if I scroll through, we can also see what devices are associated with what network, which we don't seem to be picking up a lot of since we're probably not close enough in proximity to some of these devices. But if I wanted to highlight a specific Wi-Fi network, for instance, this one here that has a lot of different Wi-Fi clients, I can do that by just using the letter M to mark this device. And this should allow me to select a color that I can use to denote this device as well as its associated clients. So for this one, I'm gonna go with this bright, jarry red color. And if I scroll down to a different network, assuming that it has any devices connected, I can go ahead and flag this in a different color just by tabbing through. And this should let me know if any devices are seen to be connected to this network by giving us a visual distinction between them with a color that we can set. There's also some other cool filter functions that we can use. For instance, being able to tab through all of these columns here and being able to sort for specific information like, like the received signal strength of a certain network, being able to sort by channels, or being able to even identify if a device might be vulnerable if it's using a specific unsecure type of encryption. 
So in order to do that, we can use the S command here, which you can see allows us to change for specific columns. And if I go ahead and run this through error.png, you can see we start selecting for different parameters um, on these column types up here. So for example, we can sort by BSSID, which is the MAC address of a network. We can sort by the power level, which lets us know how close a Wi-Fi network is to us. We can look for how many beacon frames or how many times a network is emitting its Wi-Fi name nearby, the amount of data that's flowing between a network, as well as some other really cool information. Now, for example, if I wanted to sort by power type, I can do that by tabbing over to where it says, um, should be power type here. Yeah, so power level. And as you can see, this is currently filtering out for devices that are in closest proximity to us to devices that might be a little further away. And if I wanted to do something like switch this around, I could just simply invert this by using the I command, which would now filter out for devices that are in further range from us. So I've inverted the sorting order. And when this refreshes, this shows us a list of devices in order of furthest range. There's also some other commands that you can use with error.bng, for instance, being able to toggle the colors that we've selected off just by hitting P, which you can see now reverts us to this homogeneously colored terminal. And we can also use something like this D command here just to restore the defaults if we wanna go back to our regular data capture. Now, if we're looking to target specific Wi-Fi devices, for instance, that IoT device that we spotted earlier, the current Wi-Fi scan that we have set up is not gonna allow us to do that since it's currently scanning through a whole bunch of Wi-Fi channels at the same time. So this of course loses and misses out on a lot of information since it has to hop between different channels and also since it's only operating on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So if we wanted to do something like target a Wi-Fi network that is on the five gigahertz band, there's some other parameters that we would have to enable in order to do that. Also, as you can see up here, we seem to have captured a WPA handshake, which basically contains the encrypted Wi-Fi password for a specific network, which is the one that we actually spotted that IoT device on. So if I wanted to do something like decrypt this WPA handshake, this would allow me to sniff all of the Wi-Fi traffic that's happening on this specific network, as well as grab the Wi-Fi password, so that way I can infiltrate the network and possibly run some malicious attacks. Now, if I wanted to focus in on a specific Wi-Fi network, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this window, and we can just add on a simple parameter here. Actually, first, we're gonna start this up again, and we're gonna copy the MAC address of the device that we wanna target first. So I see the network that I wanna target down here, which should be this network here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the MAC address real quick. And we can go ahead and filter out for this by using one of the filter options that's available to us through aerodump.g. So some of the things that we can filter out for are the band that we're gonna operate on. So 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz if you have a dual band card. We can filter out for a frequency in a similar way. We can also specify a channel that we want to listen in on. For instance, channel six, which this current device is operating on. And we can also do things like look out for specific BSSIDs or even target specific ESSIDs, which would be the network name of these devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and first let aerodump.ng know to focus in on channel six. And if I run this command, you can see it's now capturing all of the data that's on channel six. So we have a list of different Wi-Fi devices and networks that are currently operating on this channel. Now, if I wanted to focus in on a more specific device, I could do this by honing in on it just by typing tac tac bssid followed by the MAC address of the device that we want to scan for information on. We're now focused in on one specific Wi-Fi network and we can target all of the devices that are also connected to this network, which are listed down here. So this is of course useful if we want to run a pretty targeted attack since this focuses all of our Wi-Fi dongle's attention on one specific Wi-Fi network or even Wi-Fi device if we were to specify a specific station to attack. So now that we're focused in on one Wi-Fi network, we wanna capture all of the information that's passing over this network and save this out to a capture file that we can later on analyze. So to do this, I'm gonna first kill this program and we're gonna add one more parameter to this list that lets it know to write this out to a capture file. So as we saw earlier, we were able to capture a WPA handshake on this Wi-Fi network, which we unfortunately didn't have saved anywhere. But if we were to have saved that WPA handshake with the following parameter, which would be tac w for write, followed by our file name, which I'm just gonna leave as capture. We could later on crack that WPA handshake and use the information that we're also currently capturing to be able to decrypt this information and see things like specific websites that a user might be visiting. So now it should be writing out all the information on this data capture to a file, which I can just open up here. 
And as you can see by default, Airmon NG generates the following file formats, such as .cap, which we can use in Wireshark, a .csv file, which is a human readable file that we can also use in tools like Python for data analysis, as well as also a couple other file formats that we can use for things like war driving. So another cool feature of AeroDumpNG that we'll cover in future videos is the ability to also add on a GPS in order to gather geolocation information via a tool called GPSD. So if we wanted to do something like track down where a specific device might be located at, by using both its signal strength as well as geolocation information, we have the ability to do that thanks to the variety of different capture sources that are available to us through AeroDumpNG. So another thing we're gonna take a quick look at is how you can also change the Wi-Fi band that we're operating on. For instance, if you wanna capture information on the five gigahertz spectrum. So in order to do this, we can go ahead and use the TACB parameter, which you can see here, allows us to indicate a specific Wi-Fi band to operate on. So if, for example, if I were to do sudo aerodump tac ng wlan0 mon tac b for band, followed by a, b, and g, this would basically let us do a data capture on both 2.4 gigahertz as well as five gigahertz, which you can see now hops between all of these channels. Of course, while this gives us a more holistic idea of all the Wi-Fi information around us on both bands, this is dropping a lot of information since there's a lot more channels to hop between. So if I wanted to focus in on a more specific band like five gigahertz, I can use the option A to filter out for just five gigahertz. So for example, I can do TAC B, A, and now this is only scanning on five gigahertz enabled channels. So similarly, if I wanted to save all of the information that's being captured on the five gigahertz spectrum, I can go ahead and do the same capture file that we used for here, just by running sudo aerodump tac ng wlan0 mon tac b a, which indicates we should capture on five gigahertz, followed by tac w to let it know to write out to a file, followed by the name of the capture file that we want to write to, which I'm just gonna name test for this demonstration. So as you can see here, we've now created a new batch of files that lets us see all of the information that's currently being captured with the parameters we set up, which is all the Wi-Fi information that's coming in over the five gigahertz spectrum. Some of the data captures that we just generated with AeroDampNG can later be decrypted to reveal things like a user's network traffic, as well as in general, just be used to fingerprint a network for some of its connected devices. In upcoming episodes, we'll learn how to use these data captures for things like visualization through AirGraphNG, as well as how to use further tools in the AirCrack suite so we can run some basic Wi-Fi attacks. If you enjoyed this video and have suggestions for upcoming topics, ideas, or other hacking tools you wanna to see covered on this channel, feel free to let me know in the comments below or reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.